Hey guys, Mr. Beeler again. Uh, today we're talking about some of the commonly used electrical tools in the automotive industry, uh, some of our hand tools and some of our diagnostic type tools. So starting out, we're going to talk wire strippers and cutters and crimpers. This is one of the common multi-purpose type. It's got strippers on it. It's got crimpers for spark plug wires. There are, you'll see it says non-insulated and insulated. So these are crimpers. So if you're using connectors that have no like plastic on them or nylon, they would get crimped in that part. If they have plastic on them, like the ones you see when you buy at most of the parts stores, they have yellow, red, and blue. They get crimped in these flat parts. And this one has a cutters. The ones I like to use are these smaller guys. They get into a lot tighter spots. If I'm working in a dash. I can get this whole thing in there a lot easier than trying to get this guy in there. So this is a crimpers. Now this one only works for non-insulated terminals. So if I'm doing terminals that have coatings on them or the plastic on them, I would have to use the other crimpers. This is a set of strippers, same design, nice and small. You can get your hand in the dash, it's a lot better working on stuff. Yeah, small side cuts for cutting wires. I do have a piece of wire. So if we were stripping wire, smaller gauge wire, we'd use one of the smaller settings on here. And that's what allows us to strip the wire down. So you guys watched the video in the previous assignment. Uh, Chris Fix had a nice video about soldering. So if you had to strip that wire down, that's how you strip that wire down. Another handy little tool. These are like a little helping hands. These are magnetic. You can adjust them. They're great for holding your wires together when you're soldering. A little butane torch. These can be used to melt heat shrink. You can also, in a pinch, use these to melt your solder. So if you're out doing a roadside like a service call, or maybe you work in the ag industry, you have to go out service something in a field and fix some wiring, you can take this long. You don't need electric for that to solder. If we're soldering the proper way and we're using a soldering gun, this is what a soldering gun looks like. You guys saw that in the Chris Fix video. They also make soldering irons, which we have at the school. Uh, you guys will be using them. You usually use them your junior year. Due to coronavirus, we didn't get to that point, but you guys will be practicing soldering. We'll be doing that senior year, so you guys can get your hands on soldering irons and how to solder wires together properly. You guys will also be making jumper wires. Now, this is a different set. This is a multi-cable, and this one pulls out to 10 feet. And there's three different wires for doing different circuits. These are if you wanted to apply power to a component to test it, or if you want to apply a ground or both. You can get from a battery to that component, apply power, see if it works. You guys will be making ones, you'll be making a ground cable and a positive cable with a fuse, and those will be yours to keep. Moving into some of our more diagnostic type electrical stuff, they test light. Now they have a pointy end on this. And that pointy end is to get into small spots to check stuff, not to poke holes in insulation. Don't poke holes in insulation on wiring. What happens is moisture and salt get in there and corrode and the wire rots off wherever somebody poked the wire. I've run into this where you work on a piece of equipment, a semi-trailer, a vehicle, a boat, anything, and somebody's poked a hole halfway down a 50-foot trailer and now you've got a light problem and you gotta find that problem. And in 50 foot of wiring, you gotta find a little pin prick that somebody poked with their test light. Now the way this guy works, there's a light bulb inside of this guy. We apply power through it, just like our simple circuits, our diagrams we had. And it lights up if we have 12 volts or if it's a six volt or a 24 volt test light. Now, this tells us we have power, but it doesn't tell how much, it doesn't tell how many volts we have. It says, yes, there's enough power to turn a light bulb on. We have a complete circuit. That's all it tells us. These also, these also draw some amperage. So you do not want to use these on computer circuits. You can damage computer circuits. These are good for testing like lights and stuff, blower motors, basic stuff. As we move up, this is one out of my toolbox. This one will tell you have power or ground. Both leads hooked up. The unit, well, if it stay hooked up, stay hooked up. The unit shows us a red LED light stating that hey, we got a good connection, we got power and ground. 
Now as I touch the lead to let's say power, another red light comes on and says, hey, that's 12 volt, or that's a positive. If we go to a ground, it turns a green light on saying, hey, that's a ground. So if you're trying to test wires to find out, say you got a connector, you're trying to find out what's power, what's ground, this you can go through and quickly, it's gonna tell you what's what. Again, this doesn't tell us what volts are. It just tells us, hey, there's some power there. If we wanna know the volts, we need a voltmeter. Uh, sometimes they're just called a meter, a multimeter, a DVOM, so digital volt ohm meter. A lot of different names. I will be doing a separate video on how to properly use this. But if I want to know volts, this is the tool I have to use. You would touch negative and positive. And this jump pack has 13.66 volts. The test lights could not tell me that. All they could tell me was it's got power. The other tool that's out there is a power probe. These things can be handy, they can get you in trouble. The power probe comes with a bunch of lead. I use these a lot, troubleshooting lighting problems on vehicles. And it's got handy dandy little lights, so if you're working up on a dash or underneath a truck or something, you can see what you're doing. There's a digital screen. There's also a switch. Now, the way this thing works, kind of like that logic probe I had, if I touch ground, it lights up ground, green, and it shows zero volts there. If I touch positive, different tone, red light, and it shows me 13.6 volts. So it's kind of like a little, kind of like a voltmeter. But the other cool thing is, on these buttons, there's a negative and a positive. I can apply power with this. So if I'm trying to test a component, let's say let's grab our let's grab our test light. There's another ground here. We're going to pretend that the first test light is a light bulb we're trying to test. So let me know there's continuity through it. I can keep it staying hooked up. If I apply positive. I can turn that component on. So if you had a blower motor or a light in a vehicle you wanted to see, hey, can I turn that thing on? This acts just like your jumper wires you're gonna make. So it's a kind of like a test light, a voltmeter, and a set of jumper wires all in one. These can be handy. The problem is if you're just poking around and applying power to stuff, if you apply power to something you shouldn't, you can damage things. They have a breaker that trips to keep you from burning the wiring up on this unit like that video I showed you guys when we short the wire out. And the problem is if I'm poking around with this applying power to stuff and I don't know what I'm applying power to, if I send 12 volts back to a computer that doesn't want 12 volts, if it's a 5 volt reference, I can damage it. So you have to be careful with these. They're great for troubleshooting lighting, blower motors, window motors. You can manually run window motors up and down if you're trying to get one up. They're great for that. They also make some short finder adapters for these things that send a pulse down a wire. And you can, it's got a little box that goes along with it, kind of picks up the pulses, the radio frequency, and can tell you where the wire's broken or where it's shorted. So that's all I've got for electrical tools for you guys today. Uh, in the future, I'm going to be doing a how to use the voltmeter. We're going to go a little more in depth on that. I will talk to you next time.